the module 4 that is related to the ARM processor. So here we are going to continue with the concept. Here we let us discuss some of the fundamentals which is present inside the ARM processor. Okay, ARM processor fundamental is to, uh, today's topic. Let us see now. A programmer can think of an ARM core as functional units connected by data buses. Right? Connected by data buses means the data provided based on the data provided. A programmer would be thinking of the the core uh, the core part of the ARM would be based on the data provided. Right? As shown in the figure here. Okay. The data enters the processor core through the data bus. The data may be an instruction or instruction to execute or a data item. It depends on the uh, whatever is used. Okay. This figure shows a one human implementation of the ARM data items and instructions which share the same bus. In contrast, the Harvard implementations of the ARM use two different buses. Okay. So the instruction decoder translates instruction before they are executed. Each instruction executed belongs to a particular instruction set. So this means that the instruction which is executed uh, one in the step by step manner uh, during the initialization part, the instruction has a particular instruction set. For example, if you want to make the addition or the subtraction, it has a particular instruction to be uh, applied. Without that instruction, the program or the uh, uh, it won't be getting accessed and the output you won't be getting accurately. Uh, the execution part won't be happening. Okay, so. For a particular operation, we have a particular instruction set. Okay, the ARM processor, like all RISC processors, uses load store architecture, which which means that it has two instruction types for transferring the data in and out of the processor. Okay, so this is the transfer of data. This is the core data flow model. Okay, where the data is getting flowed uh, with all these things in the uh, mic. Okay, so here this is the data here. Then we have a sign extent. Sign extent is basically the trans. Uh, the first stage of transfer of data then we have instruction decoder that is the uh, instruction decoder means for uh, based on the data provided the instruction what kind of what type of instruction is to be used that would be fetched by the instruction decoder then it is a uh, uh, then the data is uh, passed through the sign extent and it is readed then it is passed on to the register and the register file here we have we have a set of 15 registers sorry the 16 registers that is from r0 to r15 if you compare this with 8051 microcontroller, 8051 microcontroller had only 8 registers that was from R0 to R7. But here in the ARM processor we have 16 registers that is R0 to R15. This is the complete register file where the data is fetched inside the register. Okay, Then it is given through the barrel shifter instruction for the further operations. Then that uh, if you want some other more operations to be taken place in the arithmetic way. So the AL, it is passed through an ALU as well. So this is the destination register rd from all these operations which is taking place uh, these are the inputs provided to it and this is the acc then uh, memory address counter from this the uh, alu operation is taking place and the output is fetched back to the register file only because the it is the, in the register rd so this is r15 r15 is the final register which is uh, given as the program counter then we have the address register where we have the increment that is uh, incrementer is to uh, go on the next line because we are using the program counter here. So that's why program counters uh, uh, function is it fetches the next instructions address, right? So that's why we are using this incrementer, okay? And this is the next address. So this is the complete data flow model, okay? ARM core data flow model. Here the arrows represent the flow of data whatever are the arrows is there right so all these things are the data flow here it starts from this point and complete data flow it goes through all these uh, functions okay the lines represent the buses and the boxes represent either an operation unit or the storage area load instructions copy data from memory to registers in the core store instructions copy data from registers to memory okay there are no data processing instructions that directly manipulate the data in memory Thus, the data processing is carrying out, carried out by the registers. Okay, the processing of data is done only with the, with the help of the registers because the data would be directly fetched inside the registers. Okay, the data items are placed in the register file as shown in the figure, which is a storage bank which is made up of 32-bit registers. Okay, that register file consists of 16 registers, but it uh, the storage which is made up of 32-bit registers since it is the ARM core model okay because the ARM consists of 32 bit processor most of the instructions treat the registers as holding signed or unsigned 32 bit values okay 
the registers would be capable of holding signed values as well as unsigned values. It is left to the inputs provided. The sign extend hardware converts the signed 8-bit and 16-bit numbers to the 32-bit values as they are read from the memory and placed inside the register. The ARM instructions are typically uh, made up of two source registers that is RN and RM. So these two are the ma main source registers and a single result or the destination register that is called as RD. The source operands are read from the register file using the internal buses. So these internal buses in this case are A and B. The ALU that is the arithmetic logic unit and the MAC that is the multiply accumulate unit takes the register register values RN and RM that is the source register. So whatever data is fetched inside the registers inside the source registers RN and RM those values would be taken by this ALU and the MAC from the buses and computes the result. Okay. The data processing instructions write the result in RD. RD is the destination register directly to the register file. Okay. Because it is RD is, is a part of a register. So that's why uh, after uh, fetching and uh, accessing the data after the execution from the ALU to MAC then that RD destination register is directly fetched back to the register file. The load and store instructions use the ALU to generate an address to be held in the address register and broadcast on the address bus. Okay. One more important feature of this ARM is that the register RM alternative can be pre-processed in the barrel shifter. Okay. Barrel shifter means if you want further uh, executions to be happening, uh, that pre-processing is taken place due to the barrel shifter block before it enters the ALU. Together, the barrel shifter and ALU can calculate a wide range of expressions and addresses. Okay. After passing through the functional units, the result in RD is written back to the register file using the result bus. For load and store instructions, the incrementer updates the address register before the core reads or writes the next register. Okay. So that's why we have seen the link between the program counter and the incrementer. Because uh, when we use the incrementer, the program counter would be fetching the next address. Okay. So in order to get the next address, we should be using program counter so that the incrementer would be updated. The processor continues executing instructions until an exception or the interrupt changes the normal execution flow. So this is all about the uh, ARM core data flow model along with the figure and explanation is available. Just uh, go through it. Okay.